again. It's good to be back with you. And I've got a neat dynamics problem today. This one's about rocket sleds. If you don't know what a rocket sled is, these things are really cool. When you want to do a test of some component, like an airplane part, maybe a canopy or a wing or something, at very high speeds, one of the things you can do is mount it on a rocket sled. And what you have is a sled, uh, sled. it's uh, like a, almost like a train car, except it's clamped to the rails, and it's got rocket motors on the back, and there's room on the sled for instrumentation and that sort of thing. So a typical rocket sled has long, straight, very flat rails, sometimes 10 kilometers long. I think the longest one I've heard of is about 11 miles, so what's that, like 17 kilometers maybe? Um, and you've got this sled, this, this, this uh, vehicle, that's actually kind of clamped to the rails at very high speeds. That gives you a lot less free, uh, friction than you would think. And it's also not uncommon to have two-stage rocket sleds. So we've got maybe rocket motors sticking out the back, making fire out the back. As far as I know, a lot of times they're using surplus military uh, rocket motors. So they've got some, they've got to do something with them after they reach their expiration date. And so they use them on these sometimes. So if that first sled fires and then drops off, the second stage will fire and you've got now perhaps the same amount of thrust or maybe even a little more, but you've got less mass so the acceleration goes up. All right, so let's say we're given this and let's assume a, a representative set of, set of performance numbers. Now I'm kind of making these up because there's so much design variation depending on the experiment you're trying to run. So let's say stage one fires for three seconds. I'll make that a capital T and uh, an acceleration of 5 G's. Now I think that's probably a little low. I suspect rocket sleds sometimes have accelerations much higher than that. Okay, stage two fires, two fires, also burns for three seconds. Let's say perhaps it's the same motors, same set of motors, and since it weighs less, now maybe the acceleration is 6 G. Again, maybe a low number, but these are okay. We can work with these numbers. The problem doesn't really change any if you change those numbers. The, the solution process doesn't change. And let's find, let's see some interesting stuff here. If I was running that test, I would want to know what my final velocity was and how much of the track I used up getting to that final velocity. So let's do this. Let's find V final and X final, where it looks the X is going to be in that direction. Okay, so we'll find out how fast the, the sled's going when that motor burns out, that second stage uh, set of motors, and how far it's gone when that second set of motors is burned out. So, our solution, okay, we can do this two ways. We can do this algebraically or graphically using a motion diagram. So I'm going to try it both ways here. Let's do algebraic first because we're using some pretty simple expressions that maybe we're familiar with already. So let's find V1, which is the velocity at the end of the, the first uh, stage firing. That's going to be V0 plus A1 T1. Okay, well V0 is 0 because they were coming from a standing start. Before the rocket motor fires, it's not moving. So we're going to do that. And this is 5 G's. Let's do a number for that, by the way. How much exactly is that? Well. Uh, G is 9.81 meters per second, per second squared I should say, that equals G. So 5G ought to be a little less than 5 times 10, that's about 10. So this ought to be a little less than 50. Always uh, take every chance to develop your uh, ability to estimate numbers. This is one of those times we can practice a little bit. So it's going to be a little less than 50 and it turns out to be what, 49.05 meters per second squared. Well, 6 G's ought to be a little less than 60, since 9.81 is a little less than 10 meters per second. And it is, it turns out to be 58.86 meters per second squared. All right, so we've got some numbers there. So this is going to turn out to be 49.05 meters per second squared times 3 seconds. And of course, the units are going to work out. I've got meters per second squared times seconds, I'm going to get meters per second. So when I do that, uh, V1, delta, yeah, V1 is 147.15 meters per second. Well, that makes sense since that's about 50 and that's 3, so whatever I get ought to be a little less than 150. It is, so that checks. And V final is going to be V1 plus delta V 
2. How's that? It's going to be the initial velocity plus the change in velocity from the second stage. Well, that's V1 plus A2 T2. Well, 147.15 meters per second plus now 58.86 meters per second squared times 3 seconds. And if you work that all out, it turns out to be, let's see, 323.73, 323.73 meters per second. I got that right. And that's just about, just a little less than Mach 1. That's Mach 0.9 something. Mach 1's about 340 meters per second at sea level. Now, if you're a little bit above sea level, you might be just about at the sound barrier. Okay, so we've got that. Let's go up here and say that delta x, I'm sorry, x final, equals uh, x1 plus x2. Well, x1, okay, is going to be 1 half a1 t1 squared plus v0 uh, t1 plus x0. Well, we already know. We're coming from a standing start, and the initial position is 0. So that goes to 0, and that goes to 0. Right? If we were put the number in there for acceleration 1, which is 49.05, we're going to get 220.725, 220.725 meters. All right, a couple of football fields basically. All righty, and uh, so x2, all right, is going to be one half a2 t2 squared plus v0 uh, t2 plus x0. Well, those numbers aren't zero anymore. Okay. So um, that's going to be V0, which is right uh, there, okay? T plus X0, and X0 is now 220. So if we put all those numbers in, we're going to get 927.05 meters. So in the course of six seconds, I've gone to almost Mach 1 and gone better part of a kilometer in six seconds. That's pretty good. Okay, so that's what the solution looks like algebraically. In fact, let me get out of your way if you want to kind of get a screenshot of this. What would the motion diagram look like? Well, let me erase this, and I'll just sketch the motion diagram out. Since we already know the numbers, I can just sketch it. All right, so the motion diagram is going to have acceleration at the top, velocity in the middle, and position at the bottom. So that's acceleration, velocity, and position. And time goes out the horizontal axis on all three of them, so that's time. And we know we've got two time marks in here. We've got three seconds, and we've got six seconds. Well, what's the first? It's constant acceleration on both of these, so the first one is going to look like that. Is that constant? Yeah, it's close. And I bump up just a little bit. So that's 5 G's and that's 6 G's. All right, so far so good. Now, what's velocity look like? The height here, I'm sorry, the slope here equals the height there. So if the height there is 5 G's, which is 59 or 49.05 meters per second squared, I'm going to get a, a straight line with a slope of 49.05. Right? Well, what's this going to look like? Same thing. Constant height there, so constant slope here, but a slightly higher slope because I've got slightly higher acceleration. I guess you can see that that's just a, there's two straight lines joining each other right there. And that one is, the slope there is 58.86. That height right there is V at the end of the, the first uh, rocket firing, so that's 147.15 meters per second. And the delta V right there is 176.58. And the total height from there to there okay, is going to be the final velocity, which is 323.73. This is all in meters per second. I'm going to put meters per second there, meters per second squared there, 
and that's going to be just in meters. Okay, always, always, always track your units. Last thing I need to know, that's 3 and 6 just for completeness there. Last thing I need to know is my position. Now remember, height there equals slope there. So I've got, I need to make a curve that starts out at zero slope and goes to uh, height up there, something that's not zero, a larger number. Okay, so I'm going to make a curve that goes like that. Right? So I've got one curvature here, and I've got another curvature right there. Okay? So that point right there is going to be x at the uh, end of the first firing, so that's 220.725, and that's in meters. And finally, this, this point right here is going to be 927.05 meters. So there you go. Simple problem with uh, constant acceleration at the first three seconds and then another different constant acceleration for the next three seconds, so non-constant acceleration overall. We've solved it two ways now, one algebraically and one with motion diagrams. I hope this helps, and I'll see you next time.